and gentlemen, to an all-new reaction and review. Tonight, guys, I'm checking out a television movie from 1996. That movie is Project ALF. Now, the story behind Project ALF is kind of a strange one. You see, back in the 1980s, there was a television sitcom called ALF, which was about an alien who crash lands on Earth and is forced to live with a U.S. suburban family. Uh, it ran for four seasons. Final season aired in, in 1990. The final episode of that season uh, ended with ALF being captured by the U.S. government. Yes, guys, the sitcom ended on a rather dark, downer, downer note. And we didn't know what happened after that until this movie came out six years later. What makes it even stranger is that the ALF show ran on, at least in the U.S., it ran on NBC. Project ALF, the sequel movie, aired on ABC. So, I don't know why there was the network jump. I don't know why it took six years to make this thing. I just know that this basically explains what happened after ALF was captured by the government and was taken away from the Tanner, Tanner family. I have no idea what the hell goes on in this movie. I have heard about it. I've never had the opportunity to see it. I don't even think I've ever seen a fucking clip. Tonight is my chance. I get to see if this thing is any good, considering how ALF was okay back, back in the 80s. I'm not sure if this is going to be as good as the show, but I'm kind of hoping for that. But the only way, guys, I'm going to find out is if I shut up and I push play. And I'm going to do that right now. So, without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out Project ALF. So, wait, 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 wait. So, the Tanner family was put on witness protection after ALF was captured. Okay. Don't know why they'd be put on witness fucking protection, but at least that's a good way of writing all of them out and making sure that none of them appear appear in the movie. At least it kind of works. So Alf is selling bootleg VHS tapes out of his military prison cell, or I guess they called it a suite. It actually does look kind of sort of like a hotel a hotel suite. Why the hell is Al... How is Al selling bootleg VHS tapes? Are they going to explain exactly how the hell he's getting his hands on the movies? Or... You know what? I'm probably thinking way too hard about that. It just came off as a little bit strange to me. You know, guys, at no time did I ever think this movie was going to have a scene where Alf is in a strip club watching strippers dance. Honest to God, I was not expecting that. But yet, that's exactly what I'm looking at here. I'm going to tell you, kind of odd. Not terrible, just not what I was fucking expecting. You know, guys, I totally understand the movie is trying to make it funny that Alf is fucking, that Alf is fucking hitting on this, on this woman. But it's really just kind of creepy, like, exceptionally fucking creepy, because every single one of his, like, little, like, flirty fucking lines, they just, they, they just absolutely stink of, a of pure, unholy douche. It's actually kind of sort of making the character of Alf seem a little bit more, a little, uh, a little bit more creepy and disgusting and kind of shit. You know, guys, I would really love to say that this movie's building up the tension and that this final act is going to be something to really be just, you know, just awe and just awe-inspiring. No, really isn't, guys. They are trying to build up to build up tension. Unfortunately, there's no tension to really, to really build up. In fact, actually, guys, the plot went kind of south about 20, about 20 minutes ago or so. And it hasn't really recovered since. Um, certainly hoping that the ending isn't as shit as shit as I fear it's going to be. So far, looking like it's going to end kind of badly. Well, guys, that was Project Alf, and thankfully the YouTube video I was watching of the movie cuts off the second that the credits start rolling. Alright, so, goddamn, um... 
I'm going to say right now, I was hoping for this to be as fun as the show was, because the show, while at times kind of shit, certainly had its moments, especially in the early seasons. But uh, this actually, this actually kind of sort of mirrors the show perfectly. Movie starts off strong. All right, the writing here at first is really funny. At times, it gets almost pitch fucking black with its with, with its humor. That actually, guys, is when it's is when is when this movie was at its funniest. Was at the very early moment when we are watching tapes of Alpha as he's as he's been tested for the last five years, five years, six years, and uh, the first the first scientist who has to work on him. Uh, is fried in a horrible accident involving a involving a rather high voltage piece of piece of piece of tech that Alf was wired to, and then we watch as Alf psychologically kill as as Alf psychologically destroys every other scientist afterwards by referencing the fact that um, their that their fucking colleague was fried was fried to a was fried to a crisp how he left a cinder on the floor yada 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 really funny stuff really funny really pitch black stuff oh except for one where he had to imply that she was a fucking lesbian because he asked about don't ask don't tell and how she made essentially a killing on that really just some rather funny rather fucking like uh, rather fucking like risque stuff Ris it was a little bit more it was a little bit edgier than than what was in the alf show and i really liked that unfortunately once once we get past those th those tapes which make for a which probably make for an absolutely hilarious short short film everything after that it begins to fall begins to fall apart and it begins to fall apart real fast as our two leads are essentially kidnapping Alf and they're just rushing him out of out of the out of the military base because they know that because because they know that he's going to be killed killed there it then turns into a road film for about half hour or so and then we get into that final act and I'm going to tell you right now the road and the road film aspect of it was not that good the final act was kind of shit I think part of the reason why though the final act was shit besides the fact that the ending just comes sweeping out of fucking nowhere um, is just who they cast because they all went to go and see the scientist because uh, god what in the hell what, what the hell was her name Melissa trusted this one, this one specific scientist who was kicked out of NASA or quit, whatever the hell the story was, uh, because she thought that he was like one of the few people that they could truly, truly trust. The fact that they cast, the fact that they cast, uh, they they cast friggin they cast friggin Miguel Ferrer as that scientist, kind of sort of tells us right away. It basically telegraphs and openly announces that we are dealing with a villainous douchebag here. What do you know? Sure as shit, he's totally a villainous, a villainous douchebag. As if having, uh, a, a, as if, as if having Miguel Ferrer play him wasn't enough of a dead fucking giveaway. He basically gives it away within like two minutes of first meeting him. Um, and he's, and he, and he wants to sell, he, he wants to sell Alf, but you never really get a whole lot of the detail as to how or why he's going to show Alf off on national, or worldwide television, rather. Um, and then all of that gets swiftly ended when the military shows up. And then, and then, and then the ending ending of the, of the film also just sort of, just sort of wraps up really, really freaking quick. And it kind of feels as if we spent almost 90 minutes watching this and really it it all in all of it essentially all of it essentially is is resolved in like two minutes and i'm going to tell you right now um in terms of writing i think one thing that might have saved this would have been if they didn't make it a 90 minute movie if they didn't make it a two hour television movie thus you know 90 minutes when you cut out all of the ads if you would have cut the runtime in half you would have made it like a like you would have made it like a one hour special, perhaps maybe just just focusing on the hearing and whether and whether or not Alf should should be set free. That would probably have been a lot more interesting. Unfortunately, they went they went with this, and you can tell that the writing, at least to me, you know, the writing comes off as kind of lazy. 
because when Alf is dealing with our two with with our two leads, the two who sort of the the two who kind of sort of drugged him and then took him out of the military base, when he's talking to to them, the writing almost sounds exactly like the kind of shit that you would have heard on the Alf show proper. So much so that our two leads, instead of sounding the way that they sounded throughout throughout everything else in the movie up to that point, all of a sudden they start sounding like Willie and Kate, which it just didn't sound right because that is not how the characters were up up until that point in terms of how they spoke and how they actually worked with Alf. It kind of felt like it came out of left field and it just, it just didn't work for me. I think that was my big issue. Um, honestly, guys, writing, uh, like I said, writing here, it works in certain spots, especially way early on in the film. Unfortunately, by the time that we got up to the ending, it was sort of obvious the writers did not fucking care and just wanted to wrap everything up as quickly as possible, and it ultimately feels kind of empty and shallow because of that. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So, um, could probably have been helped if they would have maybe not tried to work in a road a road movie aspect to it. Maybe if they didn't have to work in this scientist and his plan to sell Alf. Again, if they had focused in, if they if they had made the whole thing about about the fucking hearing and would have made it like a one hour special based on that alone, it could probably it could probably have worked it could probably have worked incredibly well. But that's not what but that's not what we got, and that is kind of sort of a shame. Now, um, while the writing was a little bit iffy, our acting, I'm going to tell you, at least the acting is really solid. I mean, every every single cast member here. Uh, it doesn't, it really doesn't matter if we're talking about bigger names like Martin Sheen or Ed Bagley Jr. in like the two minutes he's in the movie, all the way down to people like, uh, Miguel fucking Ferrer and, uh, I can't think of anyone else who was in the film right off the top of my head. Um, all of them turned in a fantastic showing. Um, and that also includes Paul, and that also includes Paul, uh, Fusco, the guy who created Alf, is the voice of Alf, and had a hand in writing the script. Oh, that's something else about writing I need to talk about. I understand that across all four seasons of Alf, Alf always came off as this self-serving dickhead who was essentially just sort of lovable in just simply the fact that he was a fucking smartass, but the man, well, the creature had no real soul, empathy, or anything else when all, when all was said and done. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, so you'd think that you that you would want to try to humanize him a little bit more outside of making mountains of retarded pop fucking culture references, but that's exactly what they do. And he's even douchier in this movie than he was across all four seasons of Alf. Um, he's still he is far more self serving and dickish here than he ever was in the show in the show itself, and it makes the character un fucking likable. Guys, I'm gonna tell you, four seasons of Alf, and no matter how dickish he was, no matter how big of a colossal douche Alf would become, you would still find yourself at least kind of sort of liking him a little bit. By about the halfway point, I wanted, I wanted Martin, I wanted Martin fucking Sheen to shoot Alf in the head and just end the movie right then and there, provided that Martin Sheen was in the same room as Alf. Unfortunately, the two never share fucking screen, you know, time, which just, or no, correction, they do, right at, like, right at the very end. If Martin Sheen would have shot him right there, oh, God, I would have been so happy. I honestly would not have cared about the, you know, rushed, rushed state of the final act. I would have fucking jumped for joy then. Unfortunately, we don't, we don't get that. Alf does not get any kind of real punishment for anything that happens to him. <coughs> Pardon me. Even the punishments he gets during all of the scientific testing on the base... It really was just, you know, you pop off to us, we're going to turn you into a crash test dummy. Or we're going to put you into a fucking, like, cent or we're going to put you into a, cent into a centrifuge. Like, there really wasn't anything there that really was like, that was sort of, that was sort of like a karmic payback for anything that ALF, you know, does. And 
you know, there was at least that on the show. Where if where if Al fucked up, he had to at least try to re-earn the trust of the fucking Tanners. That doesn't happen here. At no time does Alf have to make up for any of the dickish bullshit he does. And it winds up making the character ridiculously unlikable. So much so, guys, that uh, I used to actually kind of sort of enjoy, enjoy the character. Now, after this, I kind of hate him a bit. He's a massive dickhead. I mean... It, it 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 just it just doesn't feel like Alf Alf to me. I mean, Alf was always sort of a dick. Not this badly though. Um, anyway, that that's just me just just bitching about how the character was written. Um, I was talking about acting before I segued back into that. The acting here though is really solid. I am not going to diss on the acting. Uh, camera work. Well, this guy. Well, this guy was a made-for-TV movie that aired on a major that aired on a major network. So naturally. Uh, camera work and lighting and all of that are going to be fine. Our our fucking like score here is fine. Our soundtrack, what two or three songs would constitute a soundtrack, are somewhat are somewhat decent. Um, special effects. The only the only special effect we have is Alf. Alf is the Alf is the one lone effect in this whole film. And almost all of it is puppets. I mean, almost all of it is just the elf puppet uh, hidden, 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 fucking behind a table, a desk, whatever. <coughs> Pardon me. And that's the same kind of shit that they did on the show. That's fine. All right, I totally, totally expected that. Anytime that you have to see Alf running or walking or jumping on the fucking bed, it's basically just a midget in a fursuit, and that's fine, too. All right, again, that also was the very same thing that they did on the show. So while so while they didn't do anything special and they didn't really do anything to make the friggin' Alf you know puppet maybe look uh, maybe look a little bit better instead of using the same puppet they used in nineteen eighty in nineteen eighty six when they started the goddamn show, um, it it certainly works. I'm going to say that much. The puppet is the same. It, it you know the puppet is the same old puppet and the and the friggin' like puppeteering works. The suit and the suit work is fine. It really, guys, isn't anything ultimately special, but considering the fact that it's Alf, it actually works. Because Alf, as a character, has always looked like this, moved like this, sounded like this, and acted like this. It's, well, maybe not acted like this. Again, I just went on that long ramble about how he sort of goes full fucking douche in this movie. But anyway... Puppeteering here is good, and the suit work is good. There's nothing else here in terms of special effects, believe it or not. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, ultimately, guys, when all is said and done, I'm able to recommend Project ALF. Um, if you really liked the ALF show, then sure, I guess. Um, if you've never watched ALF, then there's no point for you to watch this movie. Because it is a sequel to the show proper. Um, so there's really so there's really just that. Um, I don't think I could recommend it to anyone who's never who's who's never watched ALF. And the only way I could recommend it to people who have watched ALF would be if you absolutely if you absolutely adored the show. If you were now, if you were someone like me who thought the show was average, then you're gonna hate this thing because it takes a character who was kind of sort of lovable on the show and turns him into a worthless dickhead, and that just kind of ruins the show. The show. The show in general. Um, is the fucking movie bad? No, it it most certainly isn't bad. It's just kind of boring and i really think that that is the ultimate problem with this movie is it's boring like it is monumentally boring again guys like the first like 15 20 minutes is actually kind of funny if you can find the first 20 minutes on youtube and nothing else rock on um but past that no there's <coughs> fucking hell excuse me there is nothing here past that first 20 minutes that's really worth sitting down and watching uh actually kind of feels like a little bit of a waste after that first 20 minutes or so. Actually, I could I could probably whittle that down more and say probably about the first 15 minutes. But still, um that's just that is just me. Um the movie 
you can find it you can find it on you can find it on YouTube so the plus side is that you don't have to buy it I'm just not sure if it would be worth your be be worth your be worth your time to watch it I and mean, I actually kind of feel like I wasted my time watching it and that's pretty bad yeah guys I honestly am kind of sort of on the fence with this one once more the only thing I can say is if you absolutely if you absolutely adore the ALF character, if you really loved the ALF show and you just want more fucking ALF, then by all means, check it out. But that's really the only way I could totally recommend it, is if you are a total ALF, you know, junkie and just need more. Beyond that, it really just isn't worth your, your time. My God, that... I was really, guys, expecting a slightly, a slightly better movie. I mean... I mean, this thing, this thing was made six years after the last episode of the show, and I had thought that within that six years, we would have had a really interesting story, we would have had some slightly, some slightly better, you know, writing, and we don't. Instead, Alf become, Alf spews even more pop culture references than he ever did on the show itself, and they turned Alf into a massive dick. It just kind of feels like a little bit of a letdown. I need to go watch something else. And since Alf here is a show from the 80s, probably one of the more interesting shows from the 80s, I think I'm just going to go like binge watch a bunch of old 80s sitcoms, maybe even watch a few old, few old episodes of Alf. I just need something that's better than this. Holy shit. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this episode of Reaction and Review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Peace. Yeah.